I'll read, I'll read this little bit here. Um, this, this, was, this was the beginning really, okay? We called it falling into a nightmare. Without health, life is not life. It is only a state of languor and suffering. Buddha said that, so we wrote that down at the top. <laughs> we didn't meet him or anything else. So late 2009, early 2010 was a brutally cold winter. It was a really severe one for us in Habolag and we were actually snowed in for a few days, which was unusual. Ava had a doctor's appointment scheduled for the beginning of February, but on the day it was impossible for us to drive to McCroom Town because of the bad weather, so it was slightly delayed. We eventually made it to the doctors and following the appointment, nothing appeared out of the ordinary, nothing to indicate that we should have any concerns. Bang. Ava's first seizure began at eight o'clock that night. She suddenly let out a loud exclamation of breath as her body contorted violently, a feeling of horror such as I'd never experienced before washed over me as I rushed over and held her in my arms. I did everything I could to keep her safe as it was obvious that she was suffering some kind of seizure. Ava's body was taken over by the seizure. It was so violent, so long, without mercy. Her eyes had a fixed state and her little body jerked and twisted in pain and I screamed, panicked, jeez, she's gone, ma'am, she's gone, she's gone, get Paul, where's Paul, call the ambulance, oh my God, she's gone. I was actually asked to ask you a question, Vera. Somebody has cancer and she has asked <coughs> her consultant to apply for uh, medicinal cannabis. He hasn't a notion of what she's talking about. Who does he apply to and what does he say? Her consultant needs to contact Maria Egan in the controlled, you recording this, yeah? yeah? In the controlled drugs unit in the Department of Health. <clears throat> he, the, the consultant, needs to speak to her. There, unless things have changed, there isn't a formalised application form for it, but Marie Egan will be obliged to give him the guidelines as to how to apply for the licence. It would be useful for the consultant to contact the Transvaal Pharmacy in The Hague. Um, Arwen is the pharmacist in charge in the Transvaal. That might be of benefit. Um, if the consultant is completely you know, unaware surrounding the topic, I'd say that he should be made read Professor Michael Barnes's report on medical cannabis, which can be found just on Google and downloaded and sent to the consultant. There is, um, there, th th there are also other options, okay? For example, if the consultant, because if you're treating cancer, you need THC to treat cancer. So that, that's, you know, I mean, that, that is 100% CBD is not enough. For, to treat cancer. If, you, your, if your friend encounters problems mm. or significant delay, you can approach the Calapa Clinic in Barcelona. We went, that is where I went to, to get the THC prescribed by a doctor for Ava. If you recall, we came back from Barcelona that time and they had the sniffer dogs out to meet us and they took it off me and so forth, yeah. So there are professionals there who can prescribe medication okay. and your friend would not need to initially travel over there. The, the Calapa Clinic could do a Skype consultation if you were able to provide your medical reports and in my experience, the best way to get the medical reports quickly is to tell them that you've got an appointment in England. Give them a day, you know, because otherwise it can take like weeks and weeks and weeks to get your report. But if you give them a date and keep ringing every morning, then they'll, it's amazing how things can, you know, happen. Yeah, um, thanks for that. So, uh, like you have, you have, you have options. Yeah. 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 I okay, guess great information to get. You know, um, the, we're dealing, we're getting our CBD and THC from the Transvaal Pharmacy in The Hague, um, and they're wonderful. 
and that for the moment is probably where your friend would get the THC under license, but you can go that alternative route if you if you wish. You know, and I've been there and they're they're wonderful. Yeah. Funny the bodyguards didn't approach me at all. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't if I was a bodyguard. <laughs> Simon, Simon Harris was okay up there, for you. Straight away the minute they went over to leave us other shoulder to long. He had to go busy man. He he put his he turned his he turned his shoulder like into my space and and kind of moved towards me and I didn't stand back. I certainly was not going to take a step back. I was not. Yeah. And he said he put his hand out, something like this, and he said, the, 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 bill is, the bill is going nowhere. The bill is completely flawed. I'm on a tight schedule with RT. I've got to go. Gone. My God. And it was, it was the tone. It was the look on his face. It was the intrusion into the, another person's space. I found... I found kind of uncomfortable and, and mm. offensive and hurtful and I started to cry I just I just think mm. like the, the nerves of the whole thing and I was saying oh my god you know the mascara is going to run now I'm going to be <laughs> destroyed this is what's going to happen to me like and I came back to the table and I just I think I just flounced down in the chair I, I just I was just so cross and mm. I had no intention up until that point of mentioning his name. I knew he was going to be there. I checked the seating plan and I knew where he was sitting because I'd looked in the seating plan that he was going to be there. But after he did that to me, I said, well, boy, oh, that's fine. If that's what you yeah. want, that's I why I said to him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think that was reason. Do you think so that, that was reason? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yes. Do you? Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> medical cannabis that you just spoken about and, and the resistance or apparent resistance of the government and I, I don't know that you have the answer I don't I'm wondering is it connected with big business and big pharma yeah. Yeah. Oh, I think so. because um, yeah. it's my firm view that the government is motivated by big business interests not the interests of the people that's just my political view that's my personal view it's my so political view that's too the case, it seems to me that yeah. that would be far more logical reason why they would resist your requests and that for help and so on. Oh, you know. Because there's huge money invested from the pharmaceutical yeah. side of things, and yep. they don't yeah. want that. No, no, they don't. Because they hit their money. They're touching so many people's lives, so never give up. Keep going, you will have the support, it will get better and better and better as time goes on. Because it's people like you that will change this present government, that will to do the right thing. So bless you and keep going with your work because it's phenomenal and it's amazing. Oh, thank you so much.